darling. Hey, Aunt Karen, I'm like ninja sneaking out of the baby's room because she just fell asleep. What, you have to sneak out of the baby's room? Honey, why don't you just sleep train that baby? Naps can be really difficult to lengthen and perfect and to just get them where you want them to be with a baby. And in reality, it actually is harder to teach a baby to take good long naps more so than teaching them to have solid nights. So stay tuned and I will give you my top nine tips on how to help your baby take better, longer naps. pediatric sleep coach and potty training coach. In today's video, we're going to talk all about naps. If you're interested in these kind of videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. Now, I've helped hundreds of families through their sleep training and potty training struggles, and today I really wanna help you. I really wanna help you get better naps for your child. Naps are seriously hard. And let's just throw it out there before I even get into anything. This advice is for babies six months and older. Before six months old, your baby really can't consolidate their sleep during the day and they really can't take predictable solid naps. But short naps can really result in a tired, cranky, fussy, clingy baby. And you might be thinking, where did my happy-go-lucky baby go? Well, we definitely need to figure out your baby's nap schedule and figure out how to get these naps on point so that your baby is back to their happy self. Before I jump into all my tips, I'm gonna tell you to go in the description box down below and click on the link to download my free baby nap chart. Now this chart is going to take you through every single age of your baby and what you should expect for naps, what milestones your baby might be meeting at those ages, and everything that you need to know about each age and what your nap expectations should be. Grab it while it's hot. Drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. So let's jump in with tip number one. I am always going to talk about this, but location, location, location. Wherever your child is sleeping needs to be as consistent as possible. So I obviously understand that there are some daycare babies, some babies that need to go to an in-home daycare or a facility daycare or a nanny's house or a grandma's house. And maybe they're all over the place different days of the week. And I get that. But if you can't have a consistent place, the actual environment needs to be replicated as closely as possible each place your baby is sleeping. So that means that if your baby is over one years old and they have a lovey or something that they like to snuggle up with, then you need to make sure that they have that every time they go to sleep. And that also includes their binky or whatever sleep sack they're using. Um, you need to make sure that they have white noise wherever they are sleeping and you need, 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 to make sure that their sleep environment is pitch black. This isn't an option, it's not a choice, especially if you have a baby who may be taking naps in different locations during the week. It is so important that babies have a blacked out environment so that they can't wake up and see, hey, I'm not in my room, hey, I'm at granny's house. They need to be able to not see anything in front of their hand. If, it's, if they can see in front of their hand, it's not dark enough in that room. So go down in the description box, click on the link for blackout easy window covers. If you don't have them yet, get them now. You will not regret it. I have four sets of blackout easy window covers in my kids' rooms and they love it. So tip number two is to have consistent wake windows. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that your baby is on a 2-2-2 schedule or a 2-3-4 schedule. If you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about with these wake windows. But your baby needs to have consistent wake windows every single day. So not every single wake window necessarily. Sometimes your baby can only handle two hours in as that first stretch of the morning. And as the day goes on, they can handle a little bit longer of a wake window. And it might be the other way around. You really, really need to know your baby and what your baby can handle. But once you have a grasp on that, then you will be able to offer your baby consistent wake windows every single day. This is really going to help your baby's internal clock recognize when it's time to sleep and when it's time to be awake, and it'll be much easier for them to take a nap. So as adults, you may know that maybe you're really tired one day, but maybe you just can't fall asleep and take a nap. It's because we're not used to napping. Or maybe you went to bed really, really late one night, and then for the next couple nights, you're having a really hard time going to bed early again. So it's kind of the same thing for babies. They need to have their bodies in the same rhythm, the same internal clock, knowing when their naps are going to be. Now, with that being said, I do not 
allow my clients to offer their babies ages six months and up a nap before 8.30 a.m. Anything before that is still considered overnight sleep. Ideally, this first nap will be after 9 a.m., but with the younger babies, I will stretch it to 8.30 and let them have that nap at 8.30, but definitely no earlier. On the flip side, you definitely don't want your baby sleeping past 4 p.m. because then you're going to be dealing with pushing bedtime later and later, and it will not be in line with the natural production of melatonin, which is typically between 7 and 8 p.m. Tip number three is to have a solid nap time routine. So this is of course applicable with whoever is putting your baby down for nap, especially, especially if you have other people taking care of your baby during the week. You want every caregiver to have the same nap time routine so that your baby knows, hey, it's nap time. These are the nap time expectations. This is what I need to do. Good night. So make sure your so make sure that your nap time routine is similar to your bedtime routine, but it really only needs to be about five minutes long. Tip number four is to recognize your baby's tired cues. Now, if your baby is rubbing his or her eyes, if they're looking away from stimulation, if they're just not interested, then they're probably getting tired. Obviously, if your baby is yawning, then they're clearly getting tired. So that's when you need to know, hey, let's start the bedtime routine. Also, use those tired signs in conjunction with the wake window so that you can really pinpoint your baby's perfect window of naportunity. If your baby is already crying and has just completely lost it and just can't handle anything, then your baby is overtired and they are past the point of being able to take a nap. So you definitely want to get a nap in before they lose it. Tip number five is to have active awake time. You don't want to just lay your baby down on a boppy and just, you know, let them stare off into space and do whatever they're going to do. You want to make sure that you're going out for a walk. You want to have some activities with your baby. Blow some bubbles, sing some songs, do some baby yoga. There are hundreds, if not like thousands and millions of little baby art activities that you can do with your baby. And actually, in my newborn sleep guide, I have a full chart of activities that you can do with your baby by age. So if you're interested in that, grab it down in the description box down below. You know the drill by now, go download this guide. Tip number six is no screen time before nap time. No, just don't do it. So long story short, the TV is frying your child's brain and they don't need to be in front of the TV before they're two years old. So even if you're just having it on for background noise because you're at home with your baby and you just want a little bit of something going on, turn off the TV and opt for audio only. Go for music, go for audiobooks, go for podcasts, whatever it may be. But TV is just not something that needs to be a part of your baby's life at this point. Um, I fully totally understand when you have a toddler and you need to make dinner, so you need to throw a TV show on. I get it, I'm not judging you. But at this age, you really don't want screen time for your baby. And you definitely don't want screen time anytime before bed. Typically one to two hours, but like I already said, we just don't want screen time. Tip number seven is crib hour. Now this is something new that I learned about as I became a sleep consultant. I did not know about this when I had babies, but Crib hour is basically, if your baby only sleeps for 30 minutes and then they wake up and they're content in their crib, leave them for another 30 minutes so that they can really be in the perfect environment to fall back asleep and have a good solid nap. If however they haven't fallen asleep at the end of crib hour, just take them out of the crib and move on with the day. Do not try and get them back to sleep. And then that brings me to tip number eight is nap limits. When your baby is on three naps a day, you want the first two naps to be no more than two hours and then the third nap can be 30 to 45 minutes, just a cat nap. Once your baby is on two naps a day, then you want them both to be a solid hour and a half, no more than two hours, but you definitely want it to be at least one hour. But if you can get your child to the hour and a half mark for a nap, it is going to be perfect. And then tip number nine, this is the biggest tip because so many moms are anxious. Like I get it, I'm an anxious mom, but you need to relax because your baby is going to feed off of your energy. And if you're just like nervous about how long is my baby gonna sleep or when's my baby gonna wake up from her next nap, just relax. If you're stressed, put the baby down and then go stress out somewhere else because your baby is gonna feed off of your energy. 
So do whatever you need to do to just chill out, relax, be calm, and just enjoy the time with your baby. I know it's crazy, you probably hear it all the time. Enjoy every moment because it goes by so quickly, but it's true. So do not stress. So there you have it. Those are my top nine tips to help your baby take longer, more restorative, amazing naps. Don't forget to download my nap chart down below in the description box. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Ugh, that was disgusting. <laughs> I just burped on camera. Ugh, man. I could go on and on about screen time, but I won't. Ugh.